Ah, wait. Wait. Okay. Welcome to our first day of milking in our brand new, kind of new milking station. The twin red girls. Hello. All right, I forgot. We actually don't have two come in at once. We have a special method where we milk one with the machine, then we scoot them over to the other one, and I milk them out the rest by hand because you have to do that anyway with the machine. And eventually we'll have two in place. But in the beginning, we start with one, and it's a little routine that hopefully will work. A fun fact about goats is they actually hold back a lot of their milk for their babies. And when you get towards the end of milking, you can massage it and punch it down just like a baby goat would and have them release more milk. But because they're still feeding their babies, we don't do this part. We let them retain what they want to retain for their babies. So then they'll have milk this morning to give their babies their breakfast. But then throughout the day, their body will produce milk and they'll have enough for their babies throughout the day. We're just taking right now what they produced in the night. Kevin, we have the quietest bunch of babies, right? <laughs> they're so, they're silent back there. Every other year has been crazy. All right, go on in. Hazel's just over there yelling at us. Oh, now we're loud. Good morning. That's a lot of babies. Let's see if everybody found their mamas. Tilly's walking with her two dollings over here. Let's see. Olive found her triplets. She's got her triplets, her twins, and Kevin's got his singleton. <laughs> He's hungry, you gotta go fill up that bottle. Are you hungry this morning? All of these fat juniors are gonna deliver in April. We've got Prim. Back there we've got Raven. She's very introverted. Then we've got the two red girls. We've got Dolly right here. And then Reba right there.
Her favorite thing to do is to run <laughs> from the stumps back over to the milking stand, back over to the stumps. And it's always interesting to see which one instigates the group running. That is so funny. Ready, go. Ready, go. Go. <laughs> I'm just so happy to be let out this morning. participating <laughs> Scared to do it. Do it! Big jump. Come on. His sister is right there. Do it! He just likes to stay up there and feel like he's really big. Oh, come on. Come on. Hi. You are definitely more friendly yeah. than the buckling. You are definitely more friendly. Do you want a little scratch? I always love their ribs being scratched and they turn their head back like that and try to help you out. Oh, does that feel good? Yeah. Oh, you are big and strong, aren't you? Aren't you? No. All right, so names for this little guy. Now, I was wrong. He is actually not a gold. He's a combo of chamise and buckskin. So he uh, is not really like his grandsire. He's just a combo of his parents because he's got some buckskin markings and a little bit of black on his feet, which would be the chamise. Yeah. But he's got sort of a gray underbelly, not necessarily a black one. So, he's special. He's a combo. He's a combo. He doesn't have blue eyes. They always look a little blue at first, just like with little kitties or most most newborns of other species, but he's gonna have the yellow eyes. And since he's gonna go as a weather, I think the best suggestion that I liked in the comments for him, instead of like a big fancy name, we're gonna call him Tucker, cause it just kinda goes with Tatum, Tatum and Tucker. I like that suggestion the best. But he's gonna go as a weather, as a little pet. And he's gonna be really cute. Him and Chip are gonna go together. So Chip and Tucker I think would be cute to be best buds, right? Or dip. Chip and dip. <laughs> Chip and dip. <laughs> well, we'll leave that up to the new owners if they want to call him dip. Okay guys, I have some 
pretty surprising news. Uh, as you guys know, we are going to make some cuts to the herd. We just simply can't keep so many, and in order for us to keep the babies and raise them up to see if we've improved any genetics, we have to let some of the mamas go. So as I've been assessing the herd and assessing all of the babies to see who has the best potential, I've decided to let Olive go. So Olive is great. She comes from amazing genetics. She just didn't quite get the udder that we had hoped for. And this can happen in genetics, you know? Not every toss of the dice is going to win. So that's just how it happens with genetics. And she has some really good traits, but a few that I don't know if I want to work on improving. One of her biggest strengths is her production. She produces a lot of milk, but she doesn't quite have the attachments to hold that beautiful big udder in place. So there is a family who wants to take her and use her genetics to increase their production. And they're also gonna take her two dolings with them, Mochi and Cookie. We're gonna actually keep Chip here and bottle feed him for a little bit because he's gonna go as a pet along with Tatum's little boys. They're, they're gonna go as a pair together. But I'm actually really interested to see how Olive does with her daughters, especially since we've combined Olive's genetics and Phoenix. It'll be interesting to see what comes of them. Mochi in particular is nice and wide, so it'll be interesting to see how she turns out. Unfortunately, we can't keep every goat, and even if we had a big farm and we had lots of acreage, I don't think I'd want to keep so many. It's a lot of work just to keep this little group healthy and happy. So Olive will be leaving us early, but she is there so that she can produce milk and finish raising up her daughters and they can get to know the babies and get them nice and friendly and have that time with them when they're young and cute. Meanwhile, we're gonna focus on raising up all of these other babies and taking the best care we can with them. The best thing about being close friends with breeders is that you get advice from them on the goats that you're raising. And Crystal's been there for me this whole time, helping assess her, and she is 100% on board with it too. So don't have to worry about that. I think my favorite part of the goat world is getting to know so many different breeders and forming relationships with each other. And as I send my babies out to new homes, I hope I have the best genetics that I can offer, but I'm also okay if it doesn't work out like we had hoped because that's how genetics work. Just think of you and your siblings, you know? Not all of us can be the perfect sibling. And I think all along, all of us had this one moon spot right on her back. Haven't you? This whole time you've been hiding it. Yeah, we know. 